Hey guys, in this video we're going to be looking at chapter 18 of the Ake textbook titled Arrival at the Inn. And in this chapter, we're going to be following the Roman family as they finally make it to the end and get ready to spend the night. The grammar for this chapter is coming back to adjectives. Now we've already seen what we call the first and second declension adjectives and all of their endings, and we're going to finish that discussion in this chapter by looking at the last group, which we call third declension adjectives. Once we have this down, you'll be able to use adjectives with any Latin noun you come across. But first, we're going to be looking at chapter 18's vocabulary. And again, we're going to come back to derivatives to try to give us an idea of what these words mean and how they relate to English. The first word we want to look at is praecurere, which in Latin means to run before. Now, this word we've actually seen in a different form in the verb curere, which means to run. And this actually should make some sense to you because it has the prefix pri, which means before. So if you put it all together, it literally means to run before, which is exactly how we define it in Latin. Homo hominis in Latin means man. And in English, we get words like homicide, homage, and homo sapiens. Now, all three of these have to do with the word man. So if you think of uh, Homo sapiens, for instance, it means wise man, and it's talking about, you know, our ancestors as humans. This is what we call them. Another word, homicide, means literally to kill a man, which is another word for murder. So if you think of all three of these words in English, you can tell they're holding on to that Latin root of man. Fugio fugere means to flee in Latin. And in English, we get the words fugitive, refuge, and even centrifugal, if any of you were in science class. All three of these have to do with fleeing or running away. So if you think of a fugitive, it comes from this verb of fugio. It's someone who's running away. And if you think of a refuge, it's somewhere that you go when you're running away. All three of these have that idea of fleeing or moving away from something. Mano means hand in Latin. And in English, we get a lot of derivatives. These include manuscript, manual, manage, maneuver, manufacture, and emancipate. And if you think of the meaning of all six of these words, you can see that in English they're holding on to that root of a hand. So for instance, if you think of a manuscript, it has the roots for man and to write in it. And a manuscript is something that's written by hand. The same goes for manual. If you're talking about manual labor, it's something you're doing with your hands. And again, it also applies to manufacture, which is making something with your hands. All six of these words are holding on to that in root. Now, in the Romance languages, you can see that this word manum is retained in their spelling for hand as well. So you have words like mano in Spanish, for instance. All four of these are coming from this root of manum, so that might help you out as well. Obesus means fat in Latin, and in English we get the words obese and obesity, and they hold that same meaning of being large or very fat, and you can see it's almost the exact same spelling. The phrase nisi ero in Latin means unless I'm mistaken, but the part we want to look specifically at in this video is ero. So if we highlight ero, which means I'm mistaken, or I wander, or I make a mistake, you can see that in English we get the words Error, erratic, err, we also get errant, um, erroneous, and even aberration. Now all six of these are holding on to that idea of making a mistake. So if you say you've made an error, it literally means you've made a mistake. And if you're erratic, it's someone who's sort of wandering. Um, and remember, error doesn't just mean to make a mistake, it also means to wander, as in to wander from the right answer. So all six of these are coming back to that idea of error, of making a mistake, or somehow wandering. Doleo dolere means to be sad in Latin. And in English, we get the derivatives of doleful, dolor, the name Dolores even comes from this. We also get condole, condolences, and indolent. And again, all six are holding on to this idea of being sad somehow. So if you think of sending condolences to someone, that's usually something you do when that person is sad. Um, and the name Dolores, believe it or not, comes from this idea of being sad. All six of these are coming from the same Latin root. So this brings us to the grammar for chapter 18. And like I said in the intro, what we're looking at in this chapter is adjectives again. And specifically, we're coming back to first and second declension adjectives, which you've already seen, and we're adding in this third declension. So you want to think back to what we've learned for adjective endings, because we're going to be adding to that in this video. 
So first, we want to do a quick recap of first and second declension adjectives. And you want to remember that just like Latin nouns, we use adjectives and organize them into what we call declensions, which is just another name for a grouping of words. And since many adjectives follow the same pattern as first and second declension nouns, we call those first and second declension adjectives. So if you think back to our first and second declension adjective endings, you'll notice that they're the exact same endings as first and second declension nouns. This is easy to help you remember them. And if you uh, remember back, I told you that a trick to remember these endings, or to use these adjectives, is that they're always going to have the exact same ending as the noun they modify. So for instance, if you have a first and second declension noun that's being modified by a first and second declension adjective, they're going to have the exact same ending. That makes it a little easy to figure out how to spell these words in Latin. In this video, though, we want to talk about another group of adjectives, and these are the third declension adjectives. They're called this because they're sharing the same endings as third declension nouns. So this is our second category, our group, of Latin adjectives. So if we look at our full chart now of first and second declension adjectives and third declension adjectives, we can start to see some patterns in this. So to start, we want to notice that in the third declension, the adjectives that are masculine and feminine have the exact same endings. So if you look at those two columns, it's the exact same thing. That just means there's one less thing for you to memorize when you're dealing with these adjectives. In the neuter, you want to notice that the endings here are not quite what we remember from third declension nouns. There's some slight differences here. But again, they're a very different category, and they don't have the exact same endings as masculine and feminine. So we're going to be looking at those in a little more detail through this video. So now if we compare third declension adjectives to third declension nouns, we can start to see the pattern. So looking at the noun side, this should look familiar to you. This is what we've been dealing with the entire book, the pattern for third declension nouns. But if we compare it back to the adjectives now, you'll notice that there are some little subtle differences. So for instance, on the right hand side, which is showing you the adjectives, look at the masculine and feminine chart. You'll notice that the endings are the same, except there's a slight change in that in the nominative case, there is a set pattern for adjectives. So if you look on the left hand side with nouns, we usually put a dash because there's not a set pattern um, that we can, you know, predict there. But with the adjectives, it's always going to be that short IS in the masculine and feminine. If we look over at the neuter side, though, this is where we can also see there's a slight difference. So just like before, there is a nominative singular that we want to learn. So for instance, on the noun side, we would put the dash. On the adjective side, it's that short E. That will always be the case. But for the most part, you can see the endings are pretty much the same. This is why we call them declension adjectives, because they're sharing the same endings as third declension nouns. But like I said, there are some differences, and one you want to see is in the ablative singular. No matter what gender we're talking about, so either masculine, feminine, or neuter, with third declension adjectives, the ending is different. For the nouns, it's a short e. For the adjectives, it's a long i. So that's one difference you want to take note of so that you don't get confused. Another place we want to look is in the nominative plural for the neuter. You'll notice for neuter nouns in the third declension, we recognize that A ending, which we've seen, you know, for the first 18 chapters. For adjectives, though, it's not an A, it's an IA. So you'll notice that that I has snuck in there. That's something you want to pay attention to. The same goes for genitive plural where we, we, we would usually expect a U-M in the genitive plural. There's now an I-U-M. So again, that I has snuck in, and it's something we want to take note of. If you recognize this, you'll notice that what's going on here is third declension adjectives are following the endings of what we call third declension I-stem nouns. So if you can think back to that, you should recognize the genitive plural of I-stem nouns is I-U-M. That's the exact same ending you're seeing here in third declension adjectives. That's something that might help you out in memorizing these endings. The last difference we want to notice is in the accusative plural for the neuter. So if you remember, in the neuter, the nominative and accusative are always the exact same ending. 
So it makes sense that if we just said the nominative plural in the third declension adjectives ends in IA, it will also be an IA in the accusative plural. And you can see that here, where with the nouns we would usually expect an A, the adjectives have IA. So again, that I has snuck in. You just want to make sure that you're noting that difference. The last one is the vocative, of course, which we've seen it always follows the same pattern as the nominative. So if in the neuter the nominative plural is IA, it's also going to be that in the vocative. So let's just have a quick recap of what we just saw. Third declension adjectives follow a similar pattern to third declension nouns, meaning they're sharing the same endings. The difference, though, is that third declension adjective endings have switched over to I stem meaning that the letter I has snuck in in a couple of different cases, and you want to make sure you have those places marked in your notes so that you can recognize it moving forward. Most third declension adjectives are identical in the masculine and feminine. So we showed that at the beginning of that chart. Masculine and feminine, they're identical in third declension adjectives. And from now on, you want to notice that third declension adjectives will have all three forms written out in your vocab list. So for instance, one of the vocab words we've seen is the word for all, which is omnis. And you'll notice that in the vocab, it'll write out omnis, omnis, omne. What this is doing with those three endings is showing you the masculine and feminine, which is omnis, and again, they're the same, and then the neuter, which is omne. This will help you remember that in the nominative singular, masculine and feminine adjectives in the third declension end in is. In the neuter, they end in e. That's what your book is trying to do here. So make sure you're paying attention to that in the vocab list. The last piece of grammar we want to talk about in this chapter is noun adjective agreement, which we've already seen a little bit before earlier in the book. So remember back on what agreement is. You want to know that now that you have the endings for third declension adjectives, you can start using them to modify all Latin nouns. So in other words, any noun you see can have a third declension adjective. But you want to remember that in noun adjective agreement, the noun and the adjective have to agree in case, number, and gender. And because of this, the endings might be slightly different if the noun and adjective belong to different declensions. So at the beginning of this video, I told you that it's really easy when the noun and adjective are both first and second declension. But now that you have third declension adjectives, it means that the endings might not match up. But remember, with agreement, you're only talking about case, number, and gender. They don't have to agree in declension. This is something you want to kind of process because it, it'll be a little confusing at first seeing nouns and adjectives with different endings, but you'll get used to it if you can remember this rule for agreement. So let's take a look at an example sentence to see how this works. The sentence we're going to look at is multas vilas, multos agros, multos abres viden, which means they see many houses, many fields, and many trees. So the first word we want to look at is vilas. And the first thing we notice is that it's being modified by the adjective multas, which is a first and second declension adjective. This makes sense because the spelling has the same exact ending, multas vilas. They're both feminine accusative plurals. Next we want to look at agros, which means fields. And it's being again modified by the adjective many. In this case though, it's masculine accusative plural, so the ending has switched to the OS as in multos agros. Again, it makes sense. First and second declension adjectives have the same endings as first and second declension nouns. And lastly, we want to look at the word arbores, which means trees. And we can see here that it's being again modified by the word many. Since arbores is a feminine word, though, Again, we're changing the spelling to multas with that long AS. So once more, the idea is pretty simple. When you have a first and second declension adjective modifying a first or a second declension noun, you can see that the endings match up. So look at our first two examples of wilas and agros. Those two are being modified by the words multas and multos. The endings match up. With arbores here, though, the ending is slightly different because arbores is a third declension noun. 
So with that ES ending, we know it's third declension and something isn't going to match up. In this case, the word is still multas with a long AS because it matches in case, number, and gender. So this is a perfectly good way to say many trees in Latin. The ending for multas will be that long AS. Don't get confused by the declension. Now let's switch our sentence and use a third declension adjective, omnes, meaning all. And you'll notice that in this sentence, which again says they see all the houses, all the fields, and all the trees, you'll notice that the word all, or the adjective omnes, is spelled the exact same way across the sentence. The reason that is, is because in the third declension adjective forms, the masculine and feminine accusative plural have the exact same ending. So in the case of wilas, you have a feminine accusative plural. For agros, you have masculine accusative plural. And for arbores, you have feminine accusative plural. Again, with third declension adjectives, the masculine and feminine are always the exact same ending, that long ES. So when it comes to third declension adjectives, you have to really pay attention to the agreement because the endings are not going to match up. Look at the first one, omnes wilas. You have a long ES in omnes and a long AS in wilas. And for the word fields, agros, you have a long OS. It's being modified by an adjective with a long ES. This is what I mean by the endings not matching up. It might look kind of funny, but these actually do agree with each other in case, number, and gender. This is what you want to pay attention to moving forward whenever you're using third declension adjectives.